Hi everyone, my name is Monica Joanna Alnacave with Cure Gaba A, and I wanted to jump on here once a week, once every two weeks, just to share about all the exciting things that we are doing as a nonprofit. All the information and links will be in the description box below. Today is episode three of your five minute summary. Let's start off this episode by sharing that we have had a full week of content uploaded to our YouTube channel. To get notifications on new videos that are coming up, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. We are uploading all of our future events to our Cure Gaba A Facebook events page. Click on the follow button to receive notifications. Also update the curegabaa.org website regularly. I wanted to start this episode by mentioning the overwhelming response that we've had from the Revicti clinical trial. We are on our way and closer than ever to repurposing a drug for alpha-1 and gamma-2 loss of function mutation. And this is just the beginning for the GABA-A variants. Dr. Sarah Polyquin came on earlier today, and the video will be in the description box below, and she explained all 19 genes that are associated with GABA-A variants. And Dr. Greenspan joined us to explain the Revicti clinical trial on alpha-1 and gamma-2. If you are not enrolled in the trial and you do have an alpha-1 or gamma-2 loss of function mutation and you are planning to get an off-label prescription, please ask your physician to refer you to receive a Vineland assessment before starting the drug. The goal is to ultimately have these drugs be standard of care and covered under insurance. To do this, we must show that they work and this is the purpose of the official clinical trial. Though I have spoken to many of you and I share in your enthusiasm for starting the drug, in parallel, you can conduct an N of one study, which can be less anecdotal if you have a clear way to measure the effects of the drug and if you've established a baseline. Many families have expressed their enthusiasm to try this drug with the guidance of their physician. If you are planning to, please keep a record. A great platform to do this is Matrix. The Vineland test is a great idea because it gives us insight to where your child is developmentally before starting the drug. And ideally, as a community, we would like to measure how they are doing while they are on the drug. You can also record which drugs work and which don't through the Variant app possible, requesting an EEG, unless you have had a recent EEG, would be extremely beneficial. And we have tools for you to become organized. I'm echoing the same platforms, but it is very important for us to put all of our data in one place. We have Citizen that will automatically pull all of your medical records. And if you are outside of the US, you can manually upload PDF files of your medical records. The only additional task is requesting EEG tracings from your request of information department. This can be saved on a Google Drive. This will also be helpful as we refer you to Reiki Moller and Sebastian Ortiz. And in the future, we plan to do an EEG repository in conjunction with Combined Brain. Matrix will keep track of your child's progress and regression. Matrix will also collect data in our community so we can better understand these disorders. In order for our physicians to be able to help us, they must first understand what and when things happen in this disorder, such as seizures, GI issues, sleep disorders, and movement disorders. By using a platform like Matrix, we're using validated surveys that are used amongst the scientific community to be able to publish data. The more published data, the more of an understanding we have the better the target is for creating translational treatments for our kids. It is noteworthy to say that Matrix has Dr. Greenspan's Pediatric Epilepsy Learning Healthcare System Seizure Survey. There's also a brief questionnaire about special diets, so we can know how many of our community members are on a ketogenic diet. And after having a wonderful discussion with Dr. Stephen Moss of the Moss Lab, we are so excited to announce that he will be an additional board member to our scientific advisory board. Dr. Stephen Moss leads the Moss Lab, which focuses on endogenous mechanisms neurons use to regulate the efficacy of synaptic inhibition mediated by GABA-A receptors. 
also wanted to add that there has been an overwhelming response to the platform Citizen and Matrix, and that has created a lot of excitement within the scientific community. Researchers now are very excited to work on GABA-A receptors. For example, there has been a new proposal to test a new compound on mouse models with GABA-A receptor mutations. Researchers are pursuing phase one, so there is another compound in the pipeline. This morning, I got off a call with another researcher from a university here in the US who was interested to test another compound on GABA-A variants. There is so much happening and there is so much in the pipeline the way that we can give back as a community is to continue to show our participation through uploading our data through Citizen and Matrix. There is so much work being done as we speak and to continue the momentum, we urge you to participate if you haven't already. And when you do, make sure to sign up under Cure Gab A so that we have access to your dashboard and we can include you in our de-identified list that we share with researchers. If you need any help with the onboarding process, please send an email to Augustina at Cure Gabba A. She is our patient care representative and she is there to help you with any of your onboarding needs. We look forward to what this new week will bring. Tomorrow we have our first scientific virtual meeting and we plan to do family monthly meetings starting next month. In closing, I want to thank you for your participation. Your voice is important. Your story is important and your data is important. Talk to you soon. Bye.